Hey guys, and welcome back to the ASX Investor Channel and welcome to another CEO interview. Today, we're very excited to be bringing to you the story of Nickel Mines. ASX NIC are a leading ASX company. They are actually one of the largest nickel pure plays on the boards and they're on the path to being a top 10 global nickel producer around the world. We've got quite a fascinating story. They started off as a mine predominantly and they're now focused on being a processor of nickel, producing nickel pig iron for stainless steel. And as we know, there's been a lot of attention on that broader EV battery material space with nickel being a key component in so many of the cathode chemistries at the moment. And nickel mines do have uh, the aspirations and the focus of moving towards nickel map, providing them exposure to that EV battery material trend as well. And of course, I'm sure many of you are familiar with nickel rising to attention over this past period. With the LME short squeeze that we saw, prices soared to $100,000. And interestingly, the primary short position was actually held by Nickel Mine's largest shareholder and partner, Sing Chung. So we'll be exploring that story today. Welcome and very grateful to be joined by the CEO, Justin Werner. Justin, welcome to the channel, mate. No, thank you very much. I appreciate the opportunity. It's an absolute pleasure, I guess. Before we unpack all the recent news flow announcements and what's been going on in the story, did you want to give that overview on who is Nickel Mines and where you currently play in the supply chain? Yeah, so Nickel Mines has been in country in Indonesia since 2009. So we've, we've had a long history in country. As you pointed out, we, we started out as a mining co company, but um, we've since transitioned uh, downstream into, uh, in, into processing. So we're more of an industrial company. Um, last year, we produced... Uh, on a consolidated basis, more than 40,000 tonnes of nickel um, as nickel pig iron um, and EBITDA of uh, US 225 million. Um, this year, we're on track to more than triple our production of nickel pig iron to uh, in excess of 100,000 tonnes, which, as you pointed out, will sits us firmly in amongst the top 10 global nickel producers. Um, that's been achieved in, in a little over three years. So uh, it's, it's been an incredible growth story. Um, and we are also about to diversify into the production of nickel map, um, which will, again will make us unique in that uh, we'll have exposure not only to the nickel pig iron and stainless steel market where 70% of all nickel is still consumed, but you know, the, the, uh, the, the nickel map and, and nickel sulfate market, um, which will give us direct exposure to the, uh, to, 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 to the LME market and the pricing that, uh, that, that's currently being realised uh, on that market. And I'd love just to uh, spend a little bit of time as well, having a bit of discussion about that nickel market. For those investors who might not be as familiar with it, as you mentioned, the, the large proportion at the moment in its current form is with stainless steel, of which nickel pig iron is a key feedstock for. But of course, the fast growing sector is the EV battery material space as well. Can you give that insight about how it's currently positioned and that outlook that you're looking forward to moving forward? Yeah, look, certainly the, the EV battery uh, metal space is, is, is expanding rapidly. Um, and, and, you know, the, the, the year on year growth and, and, and penetration rates are sort of over 100%. So the phenomenal, um, you know, across not just uh, China, but, you know, North America and, and, and Europe. Um, there is some concern as to where all this new, new nickel will come from. And so the announcement by Ching San that they were able to take rotary kiln electric furnaces, which previously only, you know, were used for the production of nickel pig iron and successfully produce uh, nickel mat. Um, obviously is a game changer in the ability to switch between producing either nickel pig iron or, or, or nickel mat. The, the actual conversion is, is quite simple. Um, it's very low capex. Um, two of our four current operating lines are undergoing that conversion. And we expect to make an announcement in the next two weeks in regards to the production of, of, of the first nickel mat from, uh, from, from two lines. And so, you know, that, as, as I said, will diversify our product, give us direct exposure to, to LME and, and, and potentially a, 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 whole, um, a whole bunch of uh, new, new customers. And talking about Ting Shang there as well, as you mentioned, uh, they're obviously the largest shareholder around a fifth of the total float, also the largest partner with a contract for the Nickel Pig Iron. Can you talk about the relationship there, what it's enabled you to do and any thoughts as well after everything that played out with the LME too? Yeah, look, it, it, it's, a, it's, it's a very, very strong relationship. Um, they are, as you pointed out, our, our largest shareholder. Um, the vice chairman of Ching San um, sits on the Nickel Mines board. So there's a very strong alignment of interest. As, as I said, if you look at the growth of the company, you know, to, 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 to grow in, in a little over three years to, to being a top 10 nickel producer, um, you know, ahead of BHP, ahead of Sumitomo, um, you know, up on the heels of Glencore, 
Um, and these companies have been doing it for 30 or 40 years to be able to do that in, 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 in three years, you know, that's just reflective of, of the partnership and, and Ching San's ability to, to execute and, and deliver new nickel units. Um, obviously, the, 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 the short squeeze on the, on the LME is, has taken a, a lot of people's um, focus. Um, keen to point out that, you know, operations remain unaffected. Um, Ching San is, is managing the situation and, and has sort of reached a standstill agreement with banks. They have also reduced, reduced their position. Um, you know, the question we get a lot of the time is, is, is why would they be shorting the nickel market? Um, and, and, you know, they, they have been sort of both long and short in the LME nickel market over, over, uh, over the history. Um, the reason is, is obviously with the production of, of nickel mat coming online, that fills some of the, uh, the deficit that, that people are forecasting for, for class one nickel, as well as uh, two high pressure acid leach plants, both with a capacity of 60,000 tonnes of nickel are currently commissioning. Um, the first one is expected to hit nameplate capacity um, in the second half of this year, and the second one not far behind that. That's sort of, you know, potentially 120,000 tonnes of new class one nickel that comes onto the market. And then I expect to see a, a rapid sort of uh, rollout of, of a number of these HPAL plants. And certainly Jing San announced recently a joint venture with, with, with Volkswagen, which is interesting. You're now seeing a lot of European players now moving into Indonesia because uh, quite frankly, that's really the only area where there's any new uh, nickel growth that's, that, that, that's taking place. Um, if you take Australia, for example, it's really mergers and acquisition, and, and, and that's just to replenish, um, you know, current uh, mines that are, that are ending uh, or near sort of end of, end, end of life. It's, a, it's an interesting time and appreciate the overview there. You've been talking a little bit about the growth and having a look at some of those numbers. It's been quite fascinating. I believe Nickel Mines is on track to triple growth. I believe tripling production, there was a number of $800 million annualized for EBITDA. Can you talk about uh, how you're going to be moving forward from here? We know Angel um, Nickel as well as Oracle Nickel as well, bringing some of that capacity online with the new acquisitions. What's that pathway forward from here? Yeah, correct. Um, you know, so it, it really is a, a transformative year for us. Um, Angel Nickel, we've already commissioned three of the four lines. Um, those commissioned six months uh, ahead of schedule um, and, and they're ramping up very nicely. Oracle Nickel is, is, is well advanced um, and you know, due to start commissioning in, in, in February of next year and, and, and potentially earlier. So you know, it's a rapid ramp up. Um, most of that, uh, of that new growth is, is paid for. We still have some, uh, some, some payments remaining for, 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 for Oracle. I mean, we're, again, where we're unique is all of this um, nickel production comes with a CapEx guarantee, so we take no risk, um, comes with a, a, a nameplate guarantee and a, and a timeframe guarantee. And again, unlike a mining company, we, our decision-making isn't driven by geological complexity. We don't have mine life overhang. We have very little sustaining capex and we're the beneficiary of, of a 10-year tax holiday and a further two years post that at about 11 percent so i mean that allows us to generate an, a, a tremendous amount of uh of, of EBITDA and it's allowed us to be a material dividend payer but also undergo you know the tremendous growth that we're seeing moving forward i think we we will look to focus more into growing the product mix to that sort of class one um you know potentially more nickel mat um, and, and, you know, we've, we've, we've acquired, we're requiring other nickel projects, um, some of which are, are very prospective for, for limonite resources for HPAL. So, you know, as I said, I think once that uh, rollout of HPAL starts to happen, um, given our very close relationship, you know, I'd like to think that um, we'll, we'll, we'll be a participant uh, in, in, in that as well in, 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 in the uh, near future. Plenty going on there, a lot of different moving parts. It's going to be fascinating to see how it evolves. Love just to hear some thoughts on what are some of those key growth drivers or catalysts that you think investors should be looking out for over the next period as well for nickel mines? Yeah, so I think the, the, the key catalysts, obviously, uh, first production of, of, of nickel mat, um, the, the continued ramp up of, uh, of, of angel nickel, and then uh, the, the progress of, of, of Oracle nickel. Um, new resource acquisitions um, and and you know there's a number of those that are at foot um, that, uh, that, 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 that that we're closing in on um, yeah and then really we've, we've signed an MOU um, for collaboration on a HPAL project um, I'd like to think that towards the uh, the end of this year we'll start to further that um, discussion and, 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 and start to perhaps put a, a bit of a framework around what that uh, what that may look like. 
as you mentioned, it has been a rapid ascent for ASX NIC. I'd love just to hear any final reflections that you had for those longer term shareholders who have been following the nickel mine story or potentially prospective investors who might be looking at the nickel mine story from here. And so for us, we, we just continue to uh, focus on delivering, you know, month on month, quarter on quarter production. And not only that, you know, the, the, the lowest cost production. And we actually, despite um, rising costs in terms of thermal coal, coking coal and ore prices, we actually continue to see expanded margin, um, which, you know, a lot of people <laughs> are sort of betting wrongly that our costs will go up and our margins will, will, will decline. We're actually seeing the opposite. The reason for that is we sit right at the very bottom end of the cost curve. And so, you know, the, our costs are certainly not rising as fast as the NPI cost is rising. And that NPI cost is rising because the, um, the, the cost of NPI in, 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 in China is rising. Um, and so, you know, we're, we're, we're the beneficiary of that. So you know, overall, business is very robust. Margins are increasing. And, you know, with a tripling of growth, um, you know, expect to see a, a, you know, a significant increase in our EBITDA. And, and that allows us to, uh, to, 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 to continue to uh, grow, grow the company responsibly. You know, we, we don't have a lot of debt. Um, and, and so, you know, there's certainly a lot more growth opportunities that, uh, that, that, that will be made available to us. Um, and if you look at the, de the, the deals that we've done historically, very value accretive, um, you know, where, where these uh, RKEF lines uh, have a 2.7 times, uh, uh, 2.7 year payback. Um, so, you know, you, you just don't find that anywhere else in the market as well. That is the Nickel Mine story. It's ASX NIC. If you've enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit the like button. Feel free to share it out. We make a daily video each and every day. So make sure you've subscribed and turn your bell notifications on. Justin Werner, it was a pleasure to unpack the story. Really enjoyed it. Look forward to catching up again soon. Uh, thank you very much. And, and thanks again for the opportunity. Appreciate it.